Over 17 million vehicles were sold in the U.S. in 2017. About 200,000 of them were plug-ins. So while electric cars are becoming more popular, mainstream is hardly the word to use. They're improving. Here's a good example, the second-generation Nissan LEAF. It packs more range, more power, and more tech now, but costs less. I'm at an event in Las Vegas, appropriate since this is a city that uses an awful lot of electricity. I can't give you my usual in-depth review of the LEAF, but I can give you a good idea of what it's like to live with. Beginning with design, LEAF is less uh, avant-garde now. While these LED headlights lose their boomerang shape, the overall aerodynamic silhouette up front remains. It's just shaped in sheet metal now. Nissan is big on floating roofs, so there you go. We start with the good bones of the previous car, but everything in every dimension basically has changed. So a little bit, a little bit wider, a little bit shorter, a um, little bit heavier because it's a bigger battery. So there's a big area is the battery is now 40 kilowatt hours, uh, increase from 30 kilowatt hours in model year 17. So big change there. One issue that a lot of people are talking about, the range of the new Leaf is not nearly as long as the Chevy Bolt EV, which goes about 238 miles. This one, 150. However, there will be a bigger battery available. Everybody would, of course, would like to have more range. We'd all like to have that. But what's typically used and what customers really wanted was bring something that has meaningful range at a very reasonable price, and that price is under 30,000. So that's our target is 150 miles range, under $30,000, and that's the guiding principle. Now we're gonna provide an option later, which will have more range, over 200 miles range, but it'll be at a higher price point. So it'll be sort of in two different levels. So that, to that extent, that's why, we, that's why we went with 150 miles first, is it's, it's the most practical. Yeah, and that's essentially what Tesla does. Uh, yeah, they offer different. They offer different ranges. It's um, you know significantly more, but it's also a car that costs three times as much. The original Leaf is widely considered the first affordable mass-produced electric car. The new base S model and its extra 43 miles of range starts at around 31 grand with destination. The SL models I'm driving in Vegas begin at about $37,000. There's still a $7,500 federal tax credit on top of anything your state might offer. This event was held during CES, where Nissan had a convenient cutaway, so I could leave my Sawzall at home. The electric motor hasn't changed much, but the more powerful battery and new inverter sends more power to it, so there's 147 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque now. Spanning the front and rear seats, the lithium-ion battery's shape is lowered in the middle for footroom. It's the same size, but denser, a 67% power power increase compared to the original 2010 model. SV and SL models get a quick charge port for an 80% charge in just 40 minutes. A full fill with a 220 volt hookup takes about seven and a half hours. Of course, there's no sound on startup. Leaf remains a single speed car. There's a mode for increased regeneration plus an eco mode. I'll get to this e-pedal button in a moment. Time to quietly head out of town. LEAF isn't just about being an electric car, it's a small step towards self-driving. Okay, I'm on the highway now and I'm going to briefly talk about ProPilot Assist, which is Nissan's semi-autonomous driving technology that includes things like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, and a very good lane keep assist. It has me locked in the center, it doesn't bounce around, this is a very good system. It does want your hands on the steering wheel at all times, though. The responsiveness of the electric powertrain helps the adaptive crews perform especially well. I've driven cars that are twice as expensive that don't track as smoothly. Well out of town, it's time for some evaluation. Leaf has more power now, always a good thing. Plus, electric motors have lots of torque off the line. It feels quick initially, but I'll guesstimate zero to 60 takes between nine and 10 seconds. The additional power means there might be some color in your knuckles when passing on two lane roads, but I see Leaf, at least the 150 mile version, as more of a regional urban machine. Now, because the battery is down low, the center of gravity is low, so handling is pretty good here. 
It's a trick that Chevy's Bolt EV also does well. Updated steering and suspension offer a crisper dynamic with less body roll. Much of the cornering performance will be limited by the low rolling resistance tires. Another advantage of electric cars, well, they don't have a gas engine to make noise. Leaf is very quiet. There's lots of sound insulation, so it's pretty hushed. There's the whoosh of wind around the side mirrors, typical in EVs. More high strength steel up front gives the body stoutness. I couldn't test range with just a couple hours behind the wheel, but reading the tea leaves of the gauges, it looked as though I could have made 150 miles with the temperatures hovering in the upper 50s. As an electric car, obviously it will send power back to the battery when coasting and braking. This has something called e-pedal that allows one pedal driving, take your foot off the throttle and it aggressively slows down the car, but it's unique in that the brake physically engages, it will actually hold you on a hill. Also, Leaf now uses the friction brakes in a unique way. If the battery is fully charged, and we're limited as to how much power we can bring back into the battery from the regenerative braking system, um, then we would have to adjust the level of regeneration we get. We don't want you to have a different driving feeling based on the state of charge of the battery, so we compensate for that using the friction brakes at very high state of charge, so you get the exact same drivability at high state of charge as you would at a, at a lower level of state of charge. We use that automatically. Electric car powertrains are expensive, so that means something has to give. Some will grouse this space doesn't look like a car that starts at 30 grand. The steering wheel does not adjust for reach. It is an improvement from the first car. FYI, this is the top trim SL interior, so if you want luxury appointments in your electric car, <laughs> well, good luck, since not even Tesla offers a sumptuous cabin experience. You will be comfy since the climate control is automatic, the supportive seats are heated, and so is the steering wheel. The driver can get a powered seat now. The center console is a little small, but generally there's plenty of storage nooks. The user interface is a step up for Nissan. It includes Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in the top two trim levels. Use the navigation system to easily find the closest charging station. Some are free. And because the Leaf is so quiet, this surround view will help you spot oblivious pedestrians. You know, I brought Evil Twin to test the back seats and he's in the casino gambling. So it's up to me to tell you that the back seat is okay for an average sized adult. Seats are slightly low, making thigh support average, and since the battery gets thicker under the front seat, it limits foot room. There's no power port to charge phones, and this is the only place for drinks, since there's no folding center armrest. Tall passengers might want a smidge more headroom, but average-sized adults shouldn't complain too much. I'm in Las Vegas. Sorry, there will be no TP Tron test, I can tell you. It's pretty roomy. This is pretty standard hatchback utility. It's easy to drop the seats, to open up a big space, to haul large boxes or bikes. No SUV needed. The thickest part of the battery is under the rear seat and the subwoofer takes up space. So the floor isn't flat, but it is deep. For scale, here's my big camera traveling case and the large portable charger that Nissan provides. Some will feel that 150 miles of travel is not enough, but for many, the additional range and price point of the second generation hit a sweet spot. Charged every night, Leaf can cover over a thousand miles a week, and few people drive that much. Nissan says the bigger battery comes in model year 2019. The notion of, of needing the, you know, the 200 or 300 miles range, it's very nice to have the capability, but recognize that you're paying for that capability when you don't really need it that often. Nissan says Leaf's goal has always been to democratize the electric car, and the starting price of around 31 grand before tax incentives should help this EV gain some ground on gas-powered cars. Electric vehicles tend to require less maintenance, and since one-pedal driving is fun, brake pads last longer. Improved in every way, the new Leaf looks and feels more like a regular car, and that's worth getting charged up over. In my preview of the second generation LEAF, a few people commented on LEAF's lack of an active cooling system for the battery. Nissan engineers feel it's not needed for the modern lithium ion cells that it uses. For cold markets, we have an element that will help uh, to keep the battery from getting too low of a temperature. It's not a heater as such, 
It's more like it won't allow it to go below a certain temperature. For cooling, it just allows airflow underneath the vehicle will passively cool the battery. Very high temperatures extended for a long period of time can hasten capacity loss for the battery. So it's not so good for the battery to be high temperature a long time. But what are the things that cause that? So a high ambient temperature, lots of DC fast charging, and high load through the battery. But it's a very, very small usage case. That's Nissan's side of the story. Eliminating the cooling system keeps the price down. FYI, the warranty on the pack is eight years or 100,000 miles against excessive capacity loss. All right, before we go, a special thanks to Tia. <laughs> Tia was driving for me. I think you guys know that I shoot and write these videos, so I need somebody to drive so I can get running footage. <laughs> Tia has graciously accepted the task. Thank I you did. very much. You're more than welcome. All right, that's Driven. <laughs> I'm Tom Volk.